Wakanta offers three lecture examples. Before you start with any example or any question relating to IFRS 3, remember to have your revision sheet as well as your IFRS 3 handout available. Now you will remember the first step in your acquisition method will be to determine the consideration transfer. You will also remember that I've indicated to you that IFRS 3 rules is that when we calculate our consideration paid to our subsidiary, we need to do this at fair value. And when we determine our identifiable assets and liabilities of our subsidiary, this should be at fair value. In this example, we will look at the consideration that should be at fair value. They indicate to us that Parent Limited acquired 90% in S Limited and obtained control, and the consideration is to be settled as follows. A cash payment of 800,000, therefore guys, immediately identify cash payment Credit your bank account as your bank account will decrease. Transfer of a vehicle to Mr. Control O. The fair value of the vehicle is 75,000 and the carrying amount is 65,000. Now, guys, what do we use? The 75,000 or the 65,000? We need to use the fair value, which is our 75,000. Therefore, guys, when we recognize this in the records of P Limited, we will have to then credit our assets which is the vehicle at the carrying amount being the 65,000. This is important guys remember we are now taking this out of the records of P Limited. P Limited will settle an outstanding liability of 40,000 on behalf of Mr. Control All and P Limited will issue 3,000 shares to Mr. Control All. P Limited's shares had a market price of 10 rand per share on 1 January and 11 Rand per share at the end of the financial period. Therefore, guys, do we use the 10 Rand or the 11 Rand? We need to use the fair value on acquisition date, therefore the 10 Rand. Now, guys, if we look at the consideration payable that we need to calculate, we need to include the 800,000, the cash portion, the 75,000, the fair value of our vehicle, Important, the 40,000 liability and then 3,000 times 10 Rand. Now, guys, what you need to ensure that you understand is that we are now busy with the financial statements of P Limited. Therefore, in P Limited, in return for this payment, P Limited will receive an investment. Therefore, we debit our investment in S Limited as this is an asset to the value of 94500. Now guys, do you see that we have included our vehicle at 75,000 and our shares issued at 30,000. Now we need to include all of our other journal entries. We've paid cash, 800,000, therefore our bank will decrease. Our property, plant and equipment will decrease with the 65,000. Our Gain on vehicle. Now, guys, this is important. Gain on transfer of a vehicle, 10,000. Do you see this entry, guys? Now, if you think about this, we have included 75,000 fair value. Therefore, we need to recognize this additional 10,000 as a gain on transfer. And they've indicated to us that they will pay their liability for guys, this is important. They indicate that they will settle the outstanding liability on their behalf. Therefore, this will still be included in the statement of financial position, but this will now be transferred to P Limited. Therefore, we still include a sundry liability and shares being issued, our share capital increase on the credit side. Now I'm going to change the scenario. If they indicate to us, included in the 800,000 is an amount of 50,000 payable to lawyers for drafting the actual sales agreement. Okay, Then you know that this is acquisition related cost and this should be expense in your profit and loss. Therefore, we will then debit our profit or loss expenses, guys, with a 50,000. And 
This amount, 94500, will now change. Therefore, our investment in our subsidiary will now be an amount of 895. And the rest remains the same. Important to identify, guys, that if there is acquisition-related costs, that you need to expense this in your profit and loss.